Today, we're gonna make this sound like this. Hi everybody, this is Brett from Eventide. I'm an electronic and hip hop music producer and DJ, and today I'll be showing you how to spice up your tracks using Eventide effects. I'll be looking at plugins all across Eventide's line as I reconstruct the song's effects that you heard before. If you don't have any Eventide plugins or are missing some of the ones I used today, not to worry, you can download a 30 day fully functional demo of any title you see at eventideaudio.com. Eventide was originally called Clockworks, or Eventide Clockworks, back in 1971. So we're going to go over their Clockworks line of plugins, in addition to the H9 series of plugins and a few others in between. Let's start out on our track here and see what we got. First track I'm going to start with is this Vibey Synth. Let's take a listen to it first without any effects on it. I've got an Eventide Instant Flanger that I'm going to turn on, but first let's turn it off. So we got this cool little vibey synth here. But being that this is the intro of the song, I wanted it to stand out a little bit. So I'm going to put the instant flanger on so you can hear what that does to our recording. All right, let me loop it here. And turn on the instant flanger. All right, this is the first unit to emulate true tape flanging, and it's one of the world's first professional recording products. You can choose your modulation source, so you can have an oscillator, or you can have an envelope follower, etc., or several combinations of the modulation sources. And there's a feedback which sends the output back into the input. So as you can see, in this particular instance, I have the feedback cranked. Let me turn that down. Okay, and as you can see, there's different modes here. There's a shallow mode, a deep mode, and a wide mode. Wide enhances the stereo effect. It emulates the original unit, which had a main output and an aux output. So wide output is when you use both the main and the aux. The uh, deep is for just the aux, and the shallow is just for the main. All right, but let's crank that feedback up again. And as you can see, I also have the low cut filter on, so that way I don't get any muddy artifacts. But I've actually automated this. You can see it's on here and off over here because once the chorus kicks in, I don't really want that effect because it's gonna be a little too muddy in my mix. So we've got it here building up and then it's gonna drop in with everything else. Let's go to our next track here. We've got this cool little synth here. Let's listen to it first dry. I'm gonna solo it. Now I've got the H949 on here, which I'm gonna turn off. This is one of the world's first multi-effect boxes. And this is the H949 Dual. So what you're actually looking at here is two units on top of each other as if they sat in a rack. This was a popular studio technique back before the day of plugins where you can just insert as many as you wanted. You can actually have two and create more of a stereo effect. Uh, reverse link where when one goes up, one goes down. See if I turn on the ver reverse link here, you'll see these dials uh, operate in opposite directions, or you can link them together. You can change the feedback to stereo or both. So let's listen to it without the H949. So that's a cool little line, but we wanted to lower it, slow it down, almost give it a sort of a drip effect. So here's what it sounds like with uh, the pitch pulled down an octave. And as you can see, I've got my mix at 75%, so I can still see, hear the original signal. If I turn that up, I'm only getting the pitch down. But I wanted to create a little bit of a harmony. Now this unit is really unique in that you could do a lot of different things. Right now, we're in the pitch change mode. As you can see here where it says function select, it's red, which means it corresponds to these bottom little notes here 
I'm in a normal pitch change, but I could do um, a micro pitch over here, which would only change the key uh, to a sharp or a flat. So just to hear what that sounds like. So that's a sharp of the original signal as the original, or here's the flat. So very fun, versatile unit. It's part of the Clockworks bundle. We could just listen to that in the mix. Fits nicely. For the next track, we've got a uh, synth line. This is Pendulate. This is our free synthesizer. It's a free mono synth. Go to newfangledaudio.com or eventideaudio.com and you could download this, this free mono synth. And what I wanted to do is kind of thicken it up. So I inserted Tricera Chorus, which is our chorus plugin. It's a lot of fun. It's, it emulates two different types of choruses. So here it is active and without it. Let's bring it back in. And I've got it synced. So it just kind of fills out in the mix. Without it. It's very stale and kind of simple, but once you bring in the Tricera cause, it really thickens up the broth, which I love broth. It's a three voice chorus, three phase LFO modulates the delay. There's separate times for the delay for the, for the left, center, and right channels. All right. Uh, this is one of our H9 series plugins, which means that you can manipulate it in real time. So by um, changing these little white and blue dots, you can select a range and that range is then controlled by this ribbon down below. So you can see, maybe if I solo it here, you'll hear. So this is cool for like automating to give emphasis. All right. So moving on, we've got our chorus here filling out nicely. It sounds like we've got a guitar in here. Let's see what that's doing. For the guitar, we've got both Crush Station and Shimmer Verb on there. So let's hear what it sounds like dry. Very similar. Let's add Crush Station in there. Crush Station is an overdrive, distortion, compression plugin. Great for overdriving and creating some really destructive tones. Again, I'm bringing up the drive using the ribbon. Sag is really cool. It emulates like a dying battery in your stamp in your stomp box. And it's got these octaves to really bring out some girth. Shimmer verb combines reverb, pitch, and sh pitch shifting, and feedback to create some really cool space and soundscapes. So let's listen to what Shimmer verb does to our simple little guitar tone. So I've got it pitched down two octaves and up two octaves. Change the decay, size, EQ and the feedback. So here's with the two effects. 
just wanted to give it a little bit of ethereal space. Let's hear what it sounds like in the mix. All right, I like that. Now let's move on to our, our verse over here and see what we've got going on. I'm going to start with this piano. Instant Phaser is one of the first rack mount products that Eventide created. Similar to the Instant Fa Flanger, it had two outputs. It had a main output and an aux output. So this is without Instant Phaser on. I'm gonna turn it on. And I can manually change the phase. This is really cool for automating also. Age is really unique. It actually ages the unit. So, you know, these units were all created with physical components which age over time. And so you're never gonna find two instant phasers in the real world that sound the same. And so we tried to emulate that by adding an age knob here, which is really fun. Let's change the mode so you can hear how it affects the stereo spread. Right now, it's it's in sync, and when it's in sync, you can change the timing of the oscillator. Every quarter note. So we've got our instant phaser all locked in. Give this little breakdown. Now you hear some clock noises in the background. This was like my homage to clockworks, even tied clockworks. Now I, in the um, vein of having all different types of clocks, I also recorded the click track from Ableton, which uh, you can hear right here. Very simple but I wanted this to vary as well. So I figured let's bring in ultra tap to kind of take these little clicks and ping them back and forth, all right? So let's hear what it sounds like with ultra tap in there. And you can see right over here is where I aut automate it to turn on. Let's hear that without, without the actual other music so you can hear what's actually happening. Now, another thing that I wanted to do though is I wanted to vary even when the ultra tap comes in. So later on in the song here, I've got my normal clicks. And what's that? Oh my. That is mangled verb. All right, so mangled verb is a combination of reverb and distortion. It's capable of some subtle reverbs as well as some reverbs that sound like animal torture. So uh, we went with the ladder for this particular example, and you're gonna he see when it kicks on here, it's not active, now it's active. And then it switches over to Ultra Tab. So back and forth between two different effects. Let's hear what that sounds like without with everything else. All right, I'm digging that. And another thing you might have noticed there is those bongos during that breakdown. Let's listen to the bongos, which the bongos also have ultra tap with the same little trick that we did. In addition, we added SP2016 reverb. So let's hear what it sounds like without either of these. I'm gonna bypass them. Now, you're gonna see Ultra Tap's gonna turn on. And off. 
So a good way to uh, humanize the drums. Now let's turn on our SP2016 reverb. It has different reverb algorithms in here. Right now we're in the modern stereo room, but you can choose the vintage stereo room or vintage room or plate. Now this has a unique position control, which is really fun because it basically puts the instrument in a place within a room. Okay, so right now I've got it really far back and that's what this R stands for. This is the rear of the room, but I'm gonna bring it to the front of the room. Let me increase the delay so you can hear. Let's move it back. Way in the back of the room, let's bring it up. This is a pretty cool effect. You can bring a guitar solo forward, whatever it is you, you feel creative with. All right. got lots of fun things going on here and then we figured you know what let's get a little drip style vocal in here just to kind of round out the theme and I am not a singer so I figured let's you know really put some effects on my voice okay so I'm going to play what I say which is uh, believe it even tide got that vibe mess with time because that's what we do we mess with time uh, so let's hear what it sounds like normally. I have our Omnipressor uh, compressor on here, because I'm not using a great mic when I recorded this, just to kind of boost it up. Believe it even tide, got that vibe, mess with time. Believe it even tide, got that vibe, mess with time. Okay, I'm going to bring back our H949 in, just the single version. And I'm going to do that same technique that I used earlier where I'm just bringing it down an octave. So let's hear what it sounds like. Very cool. And if you notice, there's a lot of low end there, which is muddying up my mix. So I'm going to use our E65 filter set, which is modeled after the Yuri EQ of a similar name. And I've got the low cutoff at 219. So let's bring that on. Just knock that out. And then in addition, I wanted a little bit of reverb to kind of liven it up. So brought in our SP2016 reverb. Now let's listen to it in the mix. So that is our little drip style breakdown. And as you could hear in there, I've got a, a guitar that's starting, a little rhythm guitar that I want to bring up to the forefront. Let's hear what that sounds like by itself. And for this rhythm guitar here, it has crustacean as well as crystals. So let's let's bring this out. Crystals is a dual voice reverse pitch shifter with feedback and, and decay and reverb. And we have already talked about crustacean. But as you can see here, I am automating the drive. And in addition, I automate the hot switch. So let's talk about the hot switch for a minute. What the hot switch does is it takes one preset and allows you to have two distinct sets of parameters within the same preset. So you'll see here when I click the hot switch down, that's what the preset is normally. And then when I turn the hot switch on, I get some octaves as well as some sag. All right, so it, we got our hot switch is going to turn on now. And you hear those octaves pop in. I'm going to turn them off. So this is a really fun way to quickly morph between two different settings within the same preset. 
then on top of that, I bring up the drive. And crystals. Let's see what crystals is doing. Crystals is giving us some delay here. Here's both voices going up an octave. Or I could bring one of the voices down an octave. Change the mix. There's a lower octave. There's a higher octave. That reverse is really, really nasty. Alright, I'm gonna go back to my preset and bring it back in. And it's really easy to control the ribbon using a modulation wheel on your keyboard. And the way you do that is you insert a MIDI track. And the MIDI track must correspond to the actual track you want to manipulate, which in this case is our outro rhythm. And then it's going to change the first parameter on Crush Station. And then I need to just arm it. And you can see my mod wheel over here affects the ribbon. So now if I hit record, let's just start it over here, hit record. You can see my automation is being drawn in in real time. It gets real evil sound. What I did here was I created an outro with just the drums and the guitar because I wanted to highlight our cicadas or cicadas, tomatoes, tomatoes, depending on how you pronounce it. 2021 is not only Eventide's 50th anniversary, it also marks the 17 year return of cicadas to the Princeton area of New Jersey. We made a recording of them and affected them with a couple of different effects. So we added our H3000 band delays, which takes a sound, separates it by frequency, and then each individual frequency can have a different delay or filter applied to it. So let's hear what it sounds like with H3000. Now it's on. And then in addition, let's turn on our crystals. Got the mix turned up. Really great for sound design. And let's see what that sounds like in the mix. As our mix of our crystals gently increases. Very cool for sound of sound design. And the only last thing that I wanted to just go over here is a cool breakdown that I skipped over, which is right here. I've got this wet sounding synth stab and I add Quadravox, which is a diatonic pitch shifter that has four voices, which includes panning and delay for each voice. So I'm going to show you how I automate this by bringing it gradually into the mix, all right? So let's hear what it sounds like by itself. And you're gonna hear the mix level right here gradually increase. I know my song's in A minor, so I chose that, so that way it plays nicely with my harmonies here. I have an up, up a fifth, down a fourth, up an octave and down. Now we're getting all Devo. And to hear what that transition sounds like in the mix. Here it comes. Bring it 
not. Let the delays ring out. All right. That's Quadravox. There's also a big brother called Octavox. So I hope you enjoyed all these tips and tricks I showed you today. Again, please go to eventideaudio.com to download fully functional 30-day demos for any of the titles you see here or anything else that I haven't covered today. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. We look forward to your feedback. Check out our forums on eventideaudio.com if you want immediate answers to any technical questions. Join our Facebook group and have, create some music. Let's, let us hear what you do with Eventide plugins. Once again, my name is Head Snack. You can find me at Head Snack everywhere. I welcome any questioning, any type of feedback, and I look forward to hearing from some of the other Eventide users out there. Thanks so much. Have a great day.